First of all, I would like to thank your Excellency, member of the Parl European Parliament, Sabine Verheyen, the European Internet Foundation, and the company AT&T in Brussels for the invitation extended to the Brazilian mission to the European Union to present some of the Brazilian views on the future of Internet governance. It's a great opportunity to be here at the European Parliament to participate in discussions that can, to some extent, contribute to EU's reflections on the future of Internet governance. We cherish the constant and rich dialogue that we keep with the European Union about this topic on several world fora, and we believe that we share, in many cases, the same point of view with the EU on how to ensure an open, transparent, democratic and multi-stakeholder governance of the Internet. Those are sine qua non conditions for the Internet to fulfill its potential to promote, promote social and economic development. I'll try to be briefer than I thought because uh, we don't have much time, but there is so much to be said uh, from the Brazilian point of view, so I'll try to be a little bit briefer. Brazil's own experience dispels any doubts about its credentials to talk about a multi-stakeholder, democratic and transparent model of internet governance. Back in 2003, a presidential decree created the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, in which take part representatives from the government, the private sector, the civil society and the technical and academic communities. From its 21 members, a minority of nine come from the government. The Brazilian Internet Steering Committee is frequently considered as the most accomplished example of the mode stakeholder governance provided for in the 2005 Tunis Agenda. This committee's action is ruled by a decalogue of principles which our President Dilma Rousseff invoked in her speech at the opening of the 6th to 8th session of the United Nations General Assembly last September. On that occasion, the President mentioned five of them. Freedom, privacy, and human rights, the use of the Internet must be driven by the principles of freedom of expression, individual privacy, and the respect for human rights, democratic and multi-stakeholder governance, universality of access, cultural diversity, and net neutrality. In New York, our president highlighted that it's necessary to bring in a responsible and comprehensive international legal framework based on such principles for the Internet to reach its full potential and for the people to freely enjoy all its possibilities. This perception that a proper international regulation for the Internet is needed is not new. It did, it did not emerge after the U.S. snooping on our government and companies was revealed. Field. We have been discussing in our own Congress for more than two years now a comprehensive national legal framework for the Internet. Not only will it enshrine Internet access as a right of all citizens, but also ensure freedom of expression in the cyberspace, establish minimum quality standards of services offered by Internet providers, and protect users from having their connections unreasonably filtered or blocked. We believe that uh, this will be a pioneer regulation and may contribute to a future international instrument for internet governance. Besides the more general principles that would be established in this legal framework, our Ministry of Justice is currently working on a specific bill on the protection of personal data. This bill has many principles in common with the Council of Europe's 1981 Convention for the Protection of Individuals with regard to automatic processing on personal of personal data. I would like to tell you that Brazil supports the implementation of the concept of enhanced cooperation mentioned in paragraph 69 to 71 of the Tunis Agenda. This enhanced cooperation could fill a gap existent in the current international model of internet governance by providing a platform where governments can discuss global public policies concerning internet governance. We therefore welcome the work now undertaken by the Group on Enhanced Cooperation, 
created within the UN Commission on Science and Technology for the Development. We believe that the review process of the World Summit on the Information Society should encourage deep reflection on the progress and setbacks in the implementation of goals set at the end of the China Summit. It may also be an opportunity to fill in the existing gaps in regulation that hinder the attainment of such goals. We disagree with countries such as the US and other developed nations, which maintain that there is no need of change in the current internet governance structures. We regret that those countries seem to have the intention to limit the World Summit on the Information Society plus 10 to a merely bureaucratic exercise. In this exercise, only punctual improvements might be allowed where the unfair status quo would be kept safe and sound. I would like to remind you of an opinion about the operationalization of the role of governments in internet governments proposed by Brazil at the last meeting of the World Telecommunications Policy Forum that took place in Geneva last May. This proposition found wide acceptance. Its objective was not to bring the broader debate uh, on internet, internet regulation under ITU's authority, neither to overshadow the role of the other stakeholders in the internet governance. In fact, it aimed to generate discussion on how to make more effective the participation of governments as provided for in the Tunis agenda. And this with a view to enabling governments to fulfill their commitments under the, let us say, mode stakeholder pact. To our mind, ITU, as well as other international organizations according to their activities, could give its contribution by means of training programs targeting governmental representatives, especially those from developing countries. These programs would be carried out within ITU's already existing scope. At this point, I call your attention to the fact that Brazil, as a developing country with very active and robust civil society and academic communities, upholds the rights of developing countries and its communities to take part in the governance of the Internet. Brazil has been emphasizing in the international debates the need that, besides building knowledge-based society, scientific and technological progress must aim at narrowing the persistent digital gap among countries and regions and ensure universal access to knowledge and development. And for this, the developing countries need help to face challenges in infrastructure, education, training, investment and connectivity. Furthermore, I ask your permission to briefly comment on the ICANN and the IGF. Brazil is very active in the discussions held by ICANN at the government as well as the other levels. However, this doesn't prevent us from being concerned about the fact that ICANN, despite having the ability to take decisions with global reach, does not have an international statute. It is worrying that it has only a simple contract with the U.S. government within the remit of the Department of Commerce. As regards the IGF, I would like to highlight Brazil's engagement. Its second meeting took place in Rio de Janeiro in 2007, and Brazil intends to hold in its 10th edition in 2015, as uh, Your Excellency just mentioned. To Bali, Brazil will send a very uh, representative delegation led by our Minister for Communications, Paulo Bernardo. Finally, I would like to mention, to mention once more our close cooperation and coordination with the EU due to our common view on the need to improve the current structures of internet governance. At the bilateral level, internet governance must be one of the topics to be discussed at the sixth dialogue on information society, which will take place in Brazil uh, next November. I thank you all for your kind attention.